In this video, we interview a Houston HVAC contractor that talks about humidity control, system sizing, and more. And this is part of a longer form interview. So if you want to watch the full interview, we'll make sure to link that at the end for your convenience. Enjoy. Thanks for coming on the show. Obviously, um, you've watched the show a little bit and seen kind of what we we talk about here. This is primarily a channel that educates consumers on how to get the best HVAC for their home. So that being said, just to kind of dive in, tell people a little bit about uh, background on HVAC in the, the Houston metro and kind of some of the issues that you guys run into on a daily basis and how, you know, people can get the best HVAC for their home. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you've, you've nailed it. I mean, Houston is a extremely demanding environment for HVAC systems. The humidity, the temperatures that we have every, you know, every summer, well, we always joke, you know, we have two weeks of winter the rest of the year, summer, right? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually seen one time that Houston wouldn't be habitable if it hadn't been for the invention of air conditioning. <laughs> just, just I, I so, agree. So bad here. What we found though, I've been in the industry for 12 years, came from a, a different industry working with petrochemical you know, sector. When I joined the industry, I knew nothing about air conditioning. So I got to learn from the ground up, you know, starting installing, running service calls, all the good stuff that goes into it. What we found was that the more we came to really understand how systems are designed to use the, the laws of thermodynamics to move, remove energy from a home and dump it outside, is that a lot of the systems down here are not correctly sized for the environment that they're in. And there was a misconception, I believe, that it was like putting bigger engines in a car. Like if you want to go faster, put a bigger air conditioner in. And so a lot of times over the years, you know, one generation, two generations of homeowners, you know, in that home would start upsizing the systems. And next thing you know, a home that should have had a three ton system has a five ton. So as we started really getting into the science using manual J, for instance, to correctly size systems, we started downsizing those systems, you know, taking a five ton out, putting three tons back in, which actually tremendously helps dehumidification for a number of reasons. Now, I imagine a lot of people watching this, especially in Houston, I actually lived in Sugarland for a year of my life. So I know what it's like uh, to, to deal with that humidity. You step outside and it punches you in the face. I mean, it is a very hot, humid climate. And like you said, uh, air conditioning is a lifeline. It can be nerve wracking thinking, wait, I'm going down in sizing. Explain what would cause people to increase their size in the first place. Like if they're replacing their air conditioning, is it the thought that, like you said, bigger is better? Or is it humidity removal? Or what is the primary concern that people are like trying to address with that bigger system and what's the right way to address the actual issue yeah i think for a lot of people there are just systemic problems in their home that lead to maybe not being as comfortable as as it should be things like infiltration or just their lifestyle perhaps and so the thought i think would be if i put a bigger system in it's going to get to the temperature i want it to be at faster and perhaps not use as much energy to do so, which is a, a misconception as well. Because um, it's, actually, it's where... actually using more power, right? Because it's short cycling and and actually working harder. And that right. bigger, and that when you were saying lifestyle, can you just clarify what do you mean by lifestyle? What lifestyle would be? Yeah, so be lifestyle, uh, you know, choices uh, definitely affect the heating and cooling of a home. So every single human body puts off heat, right? So if you have a large party, a lot of people come over. We've all Got experienced. It around the holidays you know yeah. the up going you got 20 people in the house and your system seems to not keep up it's hot or, or you know it, it just doesn't feel comfortable those are some of the lifestyle questions that we actually go into with clients of ours when they're looking to replace their HVAC system we've had people that through large parties all the time and, and so that, you know they may need a different sizing equation than someone who's just mom and dad and living home wow home. okay that's interesting so if uh, someone's throwing a br bunch of ragers you got to increase the duct work to uh, <laughs> satisfy the <laughs> yeah. body count go, yeah, yeah go, I mean, go. if they're doing it too much you know we're not even to look at air change out and, no <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> so, crazy but, that's yeah, no, that's funny. Um, no, it just reminds me of uh, thinking, because I know that like comes into play, obviously, in commercial buildings, because like mm -hmm. uh, body count is obviously you go into a big, uh, you know, a commercial venue, for example, if there's a thousand people in there, that's going to change the load on the space versus 10 people and just having it be uh, empty, right? Yeah, as, but I haven't heard it mentioned as much in, in residential. So that's, uh, that's interesting. But yeah, I was just curious what you meant by lifestyle choices, because I hadn't heard that mentioned on the on the channel before. So well, even there, there are a lot of consumers that will have, you know, aquariums in their homes, or a lot of pets, 
Um, it's just how people live their life. We had one client, uh, he had vintage guitars, he collected guitars. Gotcha. And obviously musical instruments are very uh, susceptible to warping and damage from humidity levels. You know, too low is bad and too high is bad. Yeah. Um, so it was very important for him that we were able to design the system that kept his house within that 45 to 55 percent relative humidity zone that he needed for his guitar collection. And so those are those are really fun for us because it's, you know, something a little unique. It's something that we may not run into every day. It gives us a new challenge to, to overcome. Yeah, absolutely. No, in, in Colorado, we definitely run into a lot of we run into the opposite problem, but we'll get, uh, you know, pianos out here or guitars. Mm -hmm. Same thing, because the sound boards will crack because our relative humidity hits, you know, 17 percent in the winter, which the Sahara is 22, which is a fun fact. It's always drier <laughs> than the Sahara. But uh, and so we always I always think that's interesting. But, you know, the, the ideal temperature or humidity is 41 percent for those or 41.6 for, the you know, the grand pianos. And so we'll normally try and get them to 35 or 40 because otherwise you start at 40. A lot of times you'll get condensation and stuff on the windows because of the relative humidity as it relates to the outside. So and you don't want, you know, water pooling and dripping down the walls because that can be a problem. And so, no, that's that's interesting. So when you're dealing with uh, a customer that's looking for, you know, obviously a system like that or humidity removal removal. You know, I learn a lot from this channel. Sometimes uh, I'll get questions in the comments that like I've never heard before. It's one of my favorite things about running it is I'm always getting, um, you know, challenged and there's new questions. One question we had one time was about inverter systems and how they relate to humidity removal because they had an inverter system installed and it wasn't doing as good of a job with humidity removal. And he was trying to get a, a referral. It was in Texas. I believe it was in Dallas, if I'm not mistaken. And what are some of the considerations for someone that's because a lot of people watching this channel, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for inverter driven heat pumps or high efficiency heat pumps and they really want a contractor that's familiar with those where do things go wrong in your climate when it comes to like an inverter that maybe isn't keeping up for humidity removal is it you know too big too small uh duct work what, what goes into that yeah that's that's a great question because just putting the system in doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do it's going to perform to its optimal you know manufacturer design so what we do if we were looking at doing a inverter system Number one, they're they're exceptional uh, because all air conditioning has some component of dehumidification, right? It's just that's just what happens when you cool air down; it condensates water out of the airstream. What inverters allow you to do is take that down to almost freezing. Like you can get it much colder, much longer, without the danger of the system icing up and, and you know potentially damaging components by modulating the you know the fan inside and the the compressor outside. So what we like to do is number one, we, we have to know that we have the right CFM, right? We have to have enough return. We have to have enough supply. We actually would go in and do a room by room heat load with some really cool tech that we have that allows us to do it very quickly. And uh, CFM, yeah. just for like people that aren't familiar, that's cubic feet per minute, right? And so uh, that's, and you're sizing CFM based on the size of the space as well as for the ductwork, correct? Right, correct. So if we were designing a duct system or if we were going in and retrofitting a home to put an inverter in, we would want to go through and make sure we have enough supply and return from each of the spaces in the home, especially, you know, bedrooms where doors will be closed at night. If they don't have a dedicated return, the air is going to kind of get stuffy in there. There's, so there's, we want to make sure that home's breathing well that we have the correctly sized ducting, that the ducting is laid out appropriately for maximizing the system's performance. And then the next thing we would do is correctly size the system based off of a manual check. There was a misconception early on with the kind of inverter, you know, variable speed, uh, inverter uh, driven systems that you could, didn't have to worry about sizing as much because you could just dial it into the home. That's not the case. They still need to be properly sized in accordance with manual J. And there's guidance in what we call manual S, which is a, in addition to the manual J, which kind of helps you pick the right equipment for what your manual J tells you. That gives you parameters of how big and how small you can, you know, oversize or undersize a system based off of, of the BT you need for the home. But if, if you have a, a properly sized system in Houston, just a single stage, you can maintain a about 50 to 60% relative humidity in a home if everything's properly sized. With an inverter driven system, we can drive that number way down. Um, now, again, there are other factors, you know, if kids are leaving doors open, or, you know, if you have a bunch of aquariums in the home, there's a lot of things that can add to the humidity in a home, but 
Sure. We've we've had some really impressive results, but it requires it all to be correct in size. So if you put a the right size inverter system in, but the ductwork isn't properly sized, well, that inverter system isn't going to be able to perform to its maximum capacity. So it really takes a holistic approach to look at what we're trying to achieve and, and design the whole thing uh, to reach that result. And most of the systems like in Houston, in terms of layout infrastructure, you guys are dealing in attics, correct? For mo for the most part, in terms of where the ducts are actually located? That's correct. Primarily attics. There are some, in, especially in Galveston area, there are, there are some homes where it's, it, the ducts are underneath the house in the crawl space. Uh, okay. No one likes those. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you definitely don't have basements because of like, like flooding no. and the, yeah and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. but yeah, no, I figured that was the case. Are you able to, because, you know, in Colorado, sometimes what we walk into is a finished basement. So it's not easy to, let's say, just swap out ducks or run a new home run return from, let's say, a master bedroom that's not keeping up or something. And it's on the other side of the house, of course, the furthest away from the HVAC unit, which makes it difficult because that's the, the longest run. So, of course, there's no airflow. You know, with most of the infrastructure you see to actually go in and access the ducts that need to be changed, or what are you running into? You know, sometimes not so much. W what are the things that you normally end up doing when you're, you know, switching out duct or adding a duct? What are you able to actually retrofit? Yeah, we we wish we could in every case, but obviously in multi-story homes, um, yeah. it, there are duct runs you cannot replace, and and unfortunately sometimes that requires us to, you know, let the customer know that. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that specific issue unless you want to sheet rock, sheet rock down and, and, you know, kind of get into the bones of the house, which, you know, that takes it from being a very expensive project to a really, really expensive project if you have to do a lot of that. Um, so most of the time, though, we can find workarounds. So if we had an issue where we, you know, we, we had, uh, let's say, too much or not enough supply on a, on a system. We can usually engineer some sort of way to dump that air back into a common area of the home in order to allow it to properly breathe or, you know, returns. It's usually we can find a place to put another return if we need to, but it does definitely create a challenge. Um, we had one client who, uh, you know, their master bedroom was first floor, uh, didn't have a really accessible attic space above it. There was no way to get ducked back to the system. So in that case, we, had to, you know, basically put a little jumper in over the master door so that they could have an air return coming out of that, that bedroom. So there are creative solutions, but unfortunately, yeah, the, the initial construction of the home does limit our options in some cases. So we hope you found this interview enjoyable. And as promised earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen and it's a link to the long form version. So check that out if you haven't already. And for more information on how you can get in touch with Seth in the Houston area, there's a link in the description with more information.